Hey everybody, told you I'd see you real soon, here I am. Uh, I'm on a roll today, I'm just firing off video after video, it's just been a rainy day so I may as well sit down and get some of these done that I've been wanting to do. Uh, this again is my brackish tank, I'm not really doing anything specific, I'm not really going to talk about water chemistry or anything like that. Um, I just love my puffer, he is just the coolest fish ever and I just want to sit here and shoot some video of him. And uh, I can chat about him a little bit while I got him on camera here. He's getting a little more camera friendly. Uh, for the longest time, as soon as I got my camera out, and when I say my camera, I'm using my phone right now. And my phone has a purple case, and I think the uh, color sort of scares him. There's one of my Bumblebee Gobies. You can get a decent look at his face there with this camera. I'll try to zoom in a little bit, but it's not very good. It gets a really grainy picture there. But that gives you a little bit of an idea of how expressive their faces can be uh, for fish. The gobies are really neat too. I really like them a lot. Uh, I was just talking to a friend of mine earlier and I was talking about this uh, Madagascan rainbow fish there. And that's one that I don't particularly care for. It's not a very pleasant fish. Um, it's got kind of a bad attitude. He just kind of harasses and chases other fish around the tank. But he's really pretty really really interesting shape just gorgeous colors on it so I guess all in all it's neat to have in my tank uh, I really highly recommend not keeping one of these in a open top tank like I do I've told this story before why I've got him in this tank um, I'm not really worried about him jumping out at this point so the other ones are a pair of pineapple sword tails uh, you can see the male is the very small one with the sword tail and then the female, she actually does have a little tiny bit of a point on the bottom of her tail. You can kind of see it right there. And she's just huge. I mean, when I got them, I got them together, and they were both smaller than him. And she just kept growing and growing and growing, and she just grew into a monster. And then this is a male uh, silver molly. And he is so shiny and bright, he always washes out on the camera, and you actually don't really get to see much of his color or detail. Uh, he's got all kinds of beautiful um, blues in him, uh, especially the fins. And then, of course, like I say, when you see him on camera, it just washes out, and it looks more like a glare than anything. But the real star of this tank is Butterbean, my figure eight puffer. Uh, who I just startled by shoving the camera in his face again. He'll come back out. He's curious about it. I, he sees it enough now that he's beginning to wonder what I'm doing when I come over here and I'm, you know, pointing his camera at him. So he will, uh, hopefully in time, get a little more used to it. And he's getting really um, greedy with the food. He's he's learning to beg a lot. Uh, the left hand corner of the tank up front is where I always drop the snails in that I feed him and he's just he gets to know that so whenever he wants food he just gets in that left hand corner and just swims up and down rapidly to get my attention and of course now he's in there cruising around looking for anything I might have dropped in since I'm up here against the glass again he's a very intelligent fish he's just he's curious about what I'm doing he knows I'm here he knows I'm at the tank um, he didn't see me drop any food in I got the camera out so he's a little cautious but he's looking um, he's trying to figure out whether I put any food in there or not now what I feed him is predominantly pond snails. I've got a tank that I just blow up with nitrates and phosphates and I just throw a handful of fish food in it every day and all I've got in it is snails. In fact I have it sitting right there. So he eats so many snails that I've pretty much gone through them. So my alternative food for him is bloodworms which I really don't like to um, feed him because when I put him in the tank, everybody gets them. Now, I don't mind my gobies eating the blood worms, but I really don't want my live bears in there just chowing down on blood worms all the time. It's just, it's more protein than they need. Um, prepared flake fish food is fine for them. Um, the puffer needs a very meaty diet, so he could eat the blood worms every day. Uh, the problem with the puffers, and this to my knowledge is holds true with all puffers, is they have um, 
tooth plates that actually grow continuously, much like a rodent has to chew on things to wear its teeth down or else it will overgrow its mouth and then it'll prevent it from being able to feed properly. Uh, the same thing happens with puffers, so they have to actually wear their teeth down by chewing on shelled food items. Um, the figure eight's teeth aren't really hard, so the pond snails are more than plenty. And even um, freeze-dried krill is another thing I put in there for him. And as long as he's eating some krill each week, that's, you know, doing enough uh, wearing down of his teeth that that's fine. You know, you don't have to be super worried about that. Um, now that he's a little older, his teeth are actually hard enough that if I ever come across the trumpet snails, I have seen him actually crack them. And he can now break into the trumpet snails. He never used to be able to. Uh, so he's definitely getting bigger and stronger. I've had him for about a year now, and as far as I can tell, those are still his juvenile coloration. I um, think they get much more, uh, the lines get much more elaborate around the body, and you get much less of that um, figure eight that they're known for. Most fish that are uh, called something that's based on their coloration is generally based on their juvenile coloration, because that's often when they're sold and when the average person is going to be seeing them in the fish store is when they look like that. So if you can see that big eight on the middle of his back or across the top of his back, that's where they get the name figure eight. And as they get older, that eight goes away and those lines get much more elaborate and much more interesting. So even at a year old, as far as I can tell, his lines are not even starting to change really. So it's been interesting to watch him grow and uh, see his... Um, very slow rate of growth. He's supposed to get three inches long eventually. So that will be interesting to see if he ever gets that way. Really, really cool fish. I really highly recommend them. <coughs> Excuse me. If you are willing to set up and do a brackish tank, um, absolutely worth it. In fact, it is so worth it that I set up a brackish tank just so I could keep one. Uh, the moment I saw them, I fell in love with them and decided that I was going to do a brackish system just so I could keep these. And there he is, and then of course the bumblebee gobies, which I didn't talk very much about or show you very much of while I was in here, um, are also really cool little fish. That one right there is the only one I have that is a leopard bumblebee or bumblebee leopard. Uh, you can kind of see the markings on the side are more broken and mottled. The other uh, ones that I have that were just sold under the name Bumblebee Gobi, and I'm sure there's many, many species that are very similar that go by the name Bumblebee Gobi. Um, but the other ones have much more distinct black and yellow um, alternating bars, whereas this one has a much more broken um, mottled appearance, and it's much, much smaller than the other one. So it's definitely a different species, and it was sold as a leopard, Bumblebee Leopard. So, interesting little fish, and then again, the live bears in there, just your basic everyday uh, sword tails, mollies, and then the Madagascan rainbow fish. And yes, there are quite a few rainbow fish that can live quite happily in brackish water. Uh, not all of them, but there are a lot of rainbow fish that can live quite happily in brackish water. So, we're over eight minutes now. I'm going to call that a video, but I could really just sit here and point the camera at this guy all day because I think he is just super neat. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, uh, please like, please sub, and as I always say, my videos are hit or miss, I either do a whole bunch of them all at once, or I'll go a week without doing any, so just go ahead and subscribe, save yourself the headache of not knowing what or when, and that way you won't miss anything. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this one, I'll see you on the next one.